De kathedraal van Antwerpen werd zo pas werk van Jan Fabre onthuld. Straf voor iemand die maar al te graag tegen heilige huizen schopt. Schrijver Stefan Hertmans schetst Fabre. Now the first impression if you come into the room is of course that you're baffled by a series of busts which have a demonic aspect. At the one side you see them in bronze, at the other side you see them in wax, which are of course two opposed materials. You can see if you look at the details that there is blood around the, 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 the spot where the novel spike is or thrust into his head or, you know, protrudes from it with a huge force. He's some sort of deer. And he gives himself old age as a deer. And if you look closer, you will in all of these heads see those sort of things. Why is his tongue green at a certain moment? Is it the poison of inspiration? What is it? As we know, Jan Faber comes out of a milieu in Antwerp where he has grown up partly in the streets as a street kid. He has this streetwise uh, attitude in him and he will always have it. And I think that very much of his nonconformism, which he really has, comes forth from this. If you see Jan Faber speaking with somebody like David Bowie, etc., he knows all these guys, he's just the same one as you will see in a cafe in Antwerp. He speaks with the king and the queen. He will always be the same guy. He never changes. There are very many people who grow very schizophrenic between their roots and their wings. When they have wings, they are ashamed of their roots very often. That's the snob. But if you really grow with authenticity in your art, there is no difference between your roots and your wings. And I think this is very important for Faber. Uh, you could say that the, um, the work of Faber consists of two greater parts, the theatrical work and the plastic art. There is, to me, not very much difference uh, between the, the dramaturge, the choreographer, uh, the drawer, the painter, the thinker, the performer. You can say that in the first place there is generosity. Um, in opposition to what some people think that he's torturing his actors and that sort of rubbish. Uh, I can tell you he's, he's one of the most generous persons I've ever seen. He's always there for them, he's always engaged, he's always uh, worried about them. But of course, he asks very much. He asks the extreme, uttermost quality of himself and of the others. If I go back in my memory to the 80s when he started, it was so new. And there came a guy who, you know, blasphemed everything. He had totally different criteria for what he was doing. And at the same time, he came out of Marcel Brotas, out of Panamarenko, uh, but also Rubens. I mean, all of a sudden, somebody rolled it all into one because you never know with Fabre what he's doing. And he will renew things until his dying day. He's so way ahead, and he's alone out there. Um, he's doing things on his own track. And we will see what happens. <laughs>